here, my name is Jennifer and welcome to my art studio. And with art studio, I mean everything creative. I mean from crafts and painting and whatever I can create with my hands, I'm going to show you. And this video is no difference. So before we get started, it would be so great if you could like and subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you get notified every time I'm uploading new stuff. Like the other letter project that I uploaded a couple of months ago, the gun belt that I made, the horseman belt. Just like that project, this one was also recorded like two years ago. This is also from Reddit Redemption 2. I would say that this is the iconic gun belt and holster combo. There's pretty much in all promo pictures of the game. This is the, the original, the first one, the one and only, <laughs> the one that you would call the Arthur Morgan belt and poster. Even though this video isn't about how to do some specific leather tooling with western style tooling patterns on it, it's still going to show you how you can create something new and make it look old and worn and vintage and used has been through a lot. These are also techniques that are perfect if you want to make something in leather that you're going to use for cosplay or something that you want to tell a story that it looks like these items have been with this character for a long time. This is what it looks like. And we have the iconic holster right here. Now, I am not someone who do a lot of things in metal, so I haven't really made my own buckle for this one. I actually just found a brass buckle and used it. Like I said, this was so much fun to create. It's so many steps to make it look like it's worn and has been used for many years. Also, the, the difference between this one and the other one is the fact that I have these bullet loops here. So I have these dummy bullets that are also in this kind of antique brass look. So they totally go with the style of this gun belt. Yeah, everything about this one, I, I couldn't be more happy. So I'm definitely going to show you the process of making this one. Yeah, I think I should stop talking now and just show you the process of how I made this awesome gun belt. <laughs> So these are all the tools you're going to need to create this Arthur Morgan gun belt from Red Dead Redemption 2. We have a leather maul or mallet, a leather scythe, a leather edge creaser, a leather stitching wheel, a leather oval hole punch, a leather hole punch, a leather sewing awl, some saddle needles, some leather stitching thread, a hammer, some brass rivets, but you can also use Chicago screws, a small anvil, some smaller buckles, preferably something that looks like antique brass, but these were the only ones I had at hand. Eight to nine ounce vegetable tan leather, preferably you would use something thicker, but this was the thickest one I had. One to two ounce vegetable tan leather for the belt loops, a utility knife, and last but not least, an oval brass buckle. So this is the pattern that I have made of the actual gun belt and I have also a pattern for the actual holster. And if you would be interested to actually purchase one of these patterns, you can just send me an email for more information. So I'm going to start with the 8 to 9 ounce vegetable tan leather and before I'm actually tracing the outlines of the pattern I just want to look at the actual leather and see which parts of the leather is actually has more of these textures and wrinkles or patterns on it that would be great for the look of a vintage worn leather belt. So when I have traced the outlines, I'm just going to use the utility knife and just cut off the piece that I have traced onto the leather piece. And here you can see that I have temporarily just placed all the bullets and the knife and another holster just to check that all the spacing looks correct and can move on to the next step. Mm -hmm. 
Next I'm going to use the sewing awl and the leather hole punch to create some holes in the leather for the actual belt buckle that I'm going to attach later. I made my end of the gun belt a little bit longer than the original because I just wanted to be able to adjust the length of the belt, you know, if I wanted it tighter or if I wanted it more loose. loops or the cartridge loops I'm going to use one to two ounce vegetable tan leather and like I did before I'm going to use the pattern to trace the outlines and then I'm going to cut it using the utility knife. To increase the length of the actual bullet loops, I am spraying the leather piece with water and then I'm starting to stretch out the leather a bit. Then I'm just rolling the leather and putting it to the side for later. Next step is to actually cut some holes for the bullet loops. So I'm going to use the leather maul and the oval hole punch. Before I'm actually going to use the maul, I have traced out where the holes for the bullet loops are going to be. Like I did before with the holes for the end strap of the gun belt, I'm using the sewing awl to create some demarcations in the leather because I'm going to actually punch the holes on the upper side of the leather instead of the back side where the actual patterns are because it's going to create a much nicer hole for the bullet loops. After that I'm just adding a little bit of water to the leather and I'm just first pressing the oval hole punch where the holes for the bullet loops are going to be. This is just so I know that the spacing looks right before I'm actually starting to punch the actual holes. Now all the preparation marks are in place where the holes are going to be and now it's time to actually punch the holes using the leather maul. So to attach these straps for the bullet loops, I'm first going from the up down into the first hole and letting a little piece of the actual strap hang free. Then I'm going to use the other end of the actual strap and pull it through the same hole that I pulled the strap through first. So it creates this loop that can get tighter and tighter. And once it gets pretty tight, I'm going to place one of the bullets into the loop and then I'm going to tighten it around the bullet so I know it's this perfect measurement that goes around the actual bullet. And I repeated this technique until all the holes on the gun belt are filled with cartridge loops. And as you can see, the actual straps for the bullet loops are actually supposed to end on the front side of the gun belt because that's what it looks like in the game. But I can't see that they are attached with any kind of stitch or anything, so off camera I'm just going to use contact adhesive to attach the ends of these straps to the front side of the gun belt. So now it's time to dye the leather and I'm going to do a dip dye technique for this process and I'm first going to separate this cartridge loops from the actual gun belt because that's going to make it easier for me to dye all the leather pieces and get an even application. And I'm going to pour all of the dye into a plastic container and then just start dyeing one piece at a time. The leather dye that I'm using is the Phoebe's Professional Oil Dye in the color Walnut which is sort of a light brown tone that is more towards red grayish cool tone finish, which looks like a perfect color match to the actual color of the belt in the game. After the dip dye, the leather pieces might look very dark, but I promise you, as soon as the dye has dried, it's going to leave this light brown cool tone finish to all the leather pieces. So 
now it's time to add some weathering to this gun belt to make it look old, worn and just vintage and has been through a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do is reattach the bullet loops that are now dried after I have dyed them dark brown. And what I'm going to do is first use some rough grit sandpaper to make the surface has a little bit more tooth to it. And then I'm going to use contact adhesive to glue it together. And I'm gluing the pieces together when I'm actually having the bullet in the bullet loops to make sure that they stay the right measurements all the time. Before I'm going to add the weathering effect, I'm just going to add some stitch grooves into the leather belt so I know where I'm going to add the stitchers for later. I haven't quite decided yet how long I want the end straps of the gun belt to be, so I'm not going over those parts with a stitch groover yet until I have decided how long I want the belt to be. So now it's time for the weathering effect and I'm going to use a rough grit sandpaper, a magic eraser and a little bit of olive oil. Before I'm actually going to use these tools, I'm going to give this belt a worn effect. It looks like it has been moving around a lot for a long time. And this effect is going to leave a lot of wrinkles and also make the leather a lot softer. Then I'm going to use the magic eraser, which is like a white sponge that you're just supposed to damp with water. And then you just go over the surface and you can see that when I'm rubbing it on top of the surface, it actually starts to remove some of the leather dye and makes it look much brighter in some spots so it looks like sun damage that it has been fading over the years and then i'm going back and forth between the magic eraser and bending the leather front and back to give all of these wrinkles and worn effects and you can also use a little bit of water if you think that it's a little bit hard to bend the leather and you want a much bigger effect the final step which is going to give this very worn damaged look using a rough grit sandpaper and you're going to see how it actually starts to torn the edges and this is the reason why I haven't actually burnished the edges because I wanted to look like they haven't been taken care of for a long time and have slowly starting to flake off in the edges and also you can see if some of the surfaces are getting some scratches and making this gun belt look like it has been through a lot and if you find that it starts to look a little bit too bright you can go back and forth between the sponges and some olive oil to give it some greasy spots from sweat and dirt and whatever kind of stain that makes it look old and worn and vintage. To prep the leather for stitching, I'm going to use the stitching wheel and I think this one was going to give a space of 4 millimeters between each stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to damp the leather so it's going to give a much better impression when I'm going over with the stitching wheel. So I get some marks in the leather for later when I'm going to use the stitching all. So here you can see I'm using the stitching awl and I'm just punching some tiny holes into the marks that was left behind from the stitching wheel. And after that was done, it was just time to start sewing the leather. I'm not going to go into much detail about how I'm stitching, but I'm using the saddle stitch method here, which is using two needles and you loop them around each other while adding the stitches. After I was done stitching the leather, I was going to add a final effect to the stitches, which is using a hammer to actually flatten these stitches and makes them look much fuller and wider. So now it's time to actually work on adding the buckle for this gun belt. And I'm just punching some more holes because I have measured out how long I want the gun belt to be and I'm just adding the rest of the holes that I need. And now it's time to attach the buckle to the gun belt. And to easily bend the end piece where the buckle is going to be attached to, I'm just thinning down the edges a bit so it's going to give a much nicer finish. So this is the belt buckle I'm going to use. And as you can see, I'm actually going to use a brass Chicago screw for this because I want the buckle here to be removable so I can replace it with a much more accurate looking belt buckle in the future that looks like the one that is used in the game. So with the Chicago screw, you just screw it in place and the belt buckle is attached. 
but you can obviously use regular rivets if you want your belt buckle to be permanently attached to your gun belt. So the pattern for this holster is already made but I just wanted to show you a little bit of the process of how I actually made the pattern from scratch. Just uh, having the uh, revolver that I have as a reference and then from that I have the right measurements and I can just start sketching the design of the holster. I also think you might find it a little bit interesting or maybe entertaining to see how I actually create a pattern for a leather piece, especially a holster. So just wanted to show a little bit of the process of how I make this pattern from scratch. This is definitely going to vary depending on what kind of revolver you are going to use for this holster but this is a pretty simple kind of holster, pretty basic so it might actually fit many different kinds of revolvers but you might have to do a few adjustments so it fits the measurements of the gun that you want to use this holster for. And the style I'm going for is a double loop holster, meaning it has two loops that are attached with belt buckles in the front and it loops around the gun belt and then it's attached from the back side of the holster and then wraps around it with smaller buckles. So here I have actually made a design on a piece of thicker cardboard and just checking that it actually fits around the revolver that I'm going to use. And after that I start tracing the pattern onto the actual leather. Just like I did before, after I have traced the details, I'm just using the utility knife to cut off the leather piece. And to make sure that the leather has a better fit around the gun, I'm using the kind of wet molding method, meaning I spray the leather with a lot of water, so it's going to be easier to mold it and bend it so it actually fits the measurements around the revolver much better. And I'm doing this before I've even dyed the leather or added any stitches or anything, just to be safe and make sure that the measurements are correct. After I had wet molded the holster, I just dyed it using the same leather dye that I used for the gun belt. After I had dyed the leather, I did the wet molding technique again, and this time I let the gun sit in the holster for longer, and I had it wrapped around a plastic bag to protect the metal. And this is going to make sure that the holster would dry in the shape that I want it to be. And once the leather had dried, I decided to glue the pieces of the holster together so they would be permanently attached and prepared for stitching later. After the pieces were glued in place, I'm just using the utility knife just to even out the edges of the holster to give it more of an even finish. And then I start preparing the leather for stitching and I'm going to use the exact same methods that I did for the gun belt. Wetting the leather, going over with the stitch rover and then I'm going to use the stitching wheel and use the stitching awl and thread and use the saddle stitch method to stitch the piece together. And I also decided to burnish and dye the edge of the holster to give it more of a finished look before I'm going to add the weathering effect. And this is also going to make sure that it stays in place much better. I also realized that even though the part where the gun is going to be has the flesh side of the leather facing outwards, it still has a little bit of a sheen to it if I look at the reference photos from the game. So it looks like the fibers of the leather has been burnished a bit so they are flattened and has a little bit of a shine and also a bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a satin sheen finish and paint it over the surface. Then I'm going to burnish it using a canvas just to give it little bit of a shine to it, like a satin sheen shine, before I'm going to add the weathering effect. And before I'm going to attach the smaller buckles, I'm going to prepare the straps of the holster, I'm going to attach the belt buckles by thinning down them a bit using a leather scythe, which is going to make it easier to bend the leather around the smaller belt buckles. 
But before I'm going to attach the belt buckles, I'm going to create the weather effect of the holster. And these are the exact same steps that I did on the gun belt, meaning I'm going to go over with some olive oil, the Matic eraser, some rougher grit sandpaper to create some scratches in the leather, and do that back and forth until I get the weather effect that I'm going for. Now we can finally add the final step, which is the smaller buckle for the loops around the holster. And I'm going to measure out how much leather is going to be wrapped around the belt buckle. And then I'm going to use the hole punch to add some holes. And then I'm going to use just the utility knife to create an oblong hole so I can slide the belt buckle into the strap. And then I'm going to use the hole punch on the opposite side of the belt loop just to create some holes so I can attach the buckled straps around the holster and keep it in place. And that's the final result. That's how you create the Arthur Morgan gun belt and holster from Red Dead Redemption 2. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for other projects, feel free to leave a comment. So that's it for this project. And I will see you in the next one, which is coming very soon.